Okay guys, this is Astocky here. Welcome to another episode of me playing. In this case, it is XCOM, or as it previously was known, UFO Enemy Unknown. Basically, this is the original game, and what I thought I would just quickly show you now, this is only going to be a short video, is the features of the original that made it so unique and so fantastic that I'm really kind of hoping you're going to be in the new one. So, we'll start a new game. I'm going to start it on beginner. Because the first thing about this is it is incredibly hard. So work out where we're going to put a base. I like, you know, sort of Northern Africa, Europe, that sort of area. And I'm going to call it Super Cool. So now you can go into your base and you can see here, I start with two intercepting fighters and a transport ship. But basically there's just a huge amount of customization that you can go through and things like that that you can do. So you can come in here, you've got a huge variety of different things that you can purchase and once you start doing research you've got a whole manufacturing facility that you can use to build new things so you know you've got a whole like sort of research tree that you can go through this is one of the really good ones to start with but clearly 10 scientists isn't enough and also for the base you start off with a small radar system it's very important to quite quickly go to a large radar system and to build an alien containment in case you capture any aliens alive and you'll always fill up your general stores really quickly and you just never have enough space for people so they're the kind of things I start with you can see I've got 1.9 million bucks left so I'm going to purchase some stuff I'm going to get myself a tank with a rocket launcher and I think you need about you need about 8 rockets but I'll just grab 14 because that's going to be plenty because what I can do now is come to my ship You've got all your crew that are on there. You've got all the different weapons and things that are on there as well. I'm just going to load heaps of weapons on, even though there's no real need for them, because what that does is that frees up store space that I can then purchase more stuff. Because one of the things you'll find out really quickly is without flares to light the day up, sorry, to light the night up, nighttime missions really, really suck. And proximity grenades are just fantastic because if you're expecting aliens to come near you, you can just kind of throw them and you know, hopefully kill them. So doing some research, can't manufacture anything yet, I've built some facilities. You can go to equip your interceptors. This one's got stingray missiles. You've got the option of avalanche missiles as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit interceptor 2 out with avalanche missiles. They have twice the range and hopefully what I can do here is go to the UFOpedia and actually bring up some of the different things so you can see the tank rocket launcher I've just bought tells you all about them as you research thing it also adds them in here so you can see at the moment I have no information on UFOs but I can look up the Stingray missile and see that it's got a range of 30 kilometers but the Avalanche has a range of 60 and it does a lot more damage so that's kind of the weapon that you'd want to use against bigger things but what we'll do is we'll just speed the world up now. Look at that, picked up my first alien. So I'm going to intercept it. I think it said it was a small ship, so I'm going to intercept it with my interceptor with the small missiles. The problem at this stage is all the small alien ships are really fast and your interceptors just can't keep up. So that kind of thing will happen a bit when you only have the small radar. But what I can do is send him to the last known position and hopefully he'll get lucky and he'll pick it up. not feeling super confident about it though but I'm just going to move the waypoint over that way just a little bit further nothing there just send him over there because the radar range is kind of it's, it's a fairly large circle but it's small in comparison with the size of the world so you sometimes have to do this where you just sort of float around a little bit and, and hope everything works alright not seeing anything so he's low on fuel so I can click on him now and say return to base he'll get back pretty quickly and then we just kinda wait ah excellent my first lot of items I have purchased have arrived so we'll load those onto the ship as well that was the no not the, pro the proximity grenades and the flares and then did I hire any new... I don't think I did I'm gonna hire another 10 another 20 scientists and another two soldiers 
That's going to eat up almost all my money. But thankfully... Okay, so the rockets have arrived, but the tank has not yet arrived. Darn it. Obviously without the tank, my, my fighting power is not going to be as good. Here we go, so basically what happens now... Sorry about the music stuttering a little bit, that's something to do with the way it's recording. So it normally sounds really smooth. So, oh, so you can see that he outran my intercept because he's much faster than me, so hopefully I'll catch him again. And when I catch him, it'll zoom back in. There we go. And I'm going to do an aggressive attack now, which means I'm going to close as quick as I can on him. I have to... Okay, so I've now crash landed the UFO. What I'm actually going to do to help this, I'm going to... Hmm, I don't have the option to change the music. That's a pain. Never mind. Let's grab the interceptor, send it out. Sorry, not the Interceptor, the Sky Ranger. And now this will transition into an actual combat mission. I don't know why I can't change the option on the music. I'm certainly going to be able to once I get into this level. Here's the equipment screen. You can basically choose what every person carries. I think this was a nighttime mission, so I'm just going to give everyone a flare. And then basically if it's not nighttime, they can just drop them. Now, because rifles are two-handed weapons, any person carrying a rifle and something in their other hand gets a penalty to, to actually shoot with it. And it, it's got a really complicated accuracy system in this. Ah, daytime. Oh, look at that. I spotted an alien straight away. So he is going to do an automatic shot, which is not very accurate, but hopefully we'll hit him anyway. Excellent. I think I got him. Oop, I think all I did was piss him off. Ooh, ooh. Returning fire is bad. Come on, hit him. Hit him. Ah, oh, serious. Okay, he's now out of action points. He's not hurt though, so I wonder who got hurt. I'm sure someone got shot. Or maybe not. So you can see his accuracy is 19%. So if I go to his stats, he's actually got a much higher firing accuracy than the other guy does. Actually, this guy's brilliant. But by crouching now right click his accuracy actually goes up even higher so he is just gonna annihilate this guy or he's gonna hit him once and then nothing is gonna happen not enough time units okay so basically I'm in the situation now where I have all my guys inside my ship and um, I'm gonna have to end the turn so I think they're gonna get shot quite badly I know. <clears throat> we got really lucky then that he decided to run away. So what I'm going to do is prime this grenade for zero, which means on the turn that it gets thrown it will explode. And then hopefully he's not going to shoot me. If he had hit me then, I would have actually dropped this grenade right where I was standing. And that would have ended really badly. Hopefully... Excellent! I've thrown the grenade right next to him. So when I end the turn now, that's going to explode. And if everything goes well... That was a weird death sound, but hopefully that means he's now dead. Yep! Excellent! It goes to the end of the mission. So, I've recovered one killed alien, four alien artifacts, and two alien alloys. And two of my people got promoted, which is good. Don't worry about that, not enough people to re-equip the squad sort of thing, that's something that happens occasionally. So, now what you do is you go into the next phase, which is basically, you can see my craft uh, rearming themselves and getting ready, and then you go back to the re-equipping, you can look at your soldiers, you can see how there's a little light shade there, that means they've actually gone up in experience, so you can sort of watch how they go up in experience and good things like that happen. You can also now go to, sorry, not manufacture, you can go to, to research. And you can actually see I now have new projects that I can research. I can research Plasma Pistol, which was the weapon that apparently I found on him, Mine Probe, Alien Alloys, and you should generally be able to, well, research a couple of other different ones. It depends on what you find on the ship that you find. You can see I'm making good progress on my laser weapons though, which is excellent. You can now also go in here and see all the different things that you collected. 
So I've got uh, two alien alloys. You only need one to research, so I could sell one, but that's a particular item that you'll find out later on you actually need to use for manufacturing. So <clears throat> you can see there's huge amounts of things. You can now build new bases. You can get information, really detailed information about your base, about how much everything costs per month. It is just a fantastically detailed strategy game that has this top level kind of looking after things and then you get right down in the weeds with controlling every single individual action of a person. The only thing that I would really suggest might make this game a little bit better than it is, is if you had the ability to just strategically manage it like a general. So basically you could send the team in and have it intercept but then not have to control them. Basically just say auto determine the outcome of this battle.